fits. Okay, we have a fits chart. Now, why do we have a fits chart? Well, because we're trying to make something fit nicely. Now, this does not apply to throwing a bolt through a hole and bolting something together, no. We're talking about something more accurate than that. For example, putting a bearing on. So you put a bearing on a shaft, it's gotta be pretty accurate. You don't want the shaft to be slipping inside the bearing because the bearing is too loose on the shaft. That would be useless. So when you're making something like a car gearbox, there will be lots of situations where you will have special close fits, like putting a bearing on, um, gears, um, anything where, where uh, things have to be lined up very exactly. But here we're specifically talking about something inside and something on the outside. So something fitting inside a hole. Now it doesn't have to be a round hole, it could be a square hole. But most often we just think of the inside as maybe a, something round, like a shaft. Okay, that makes sense. And the outside would be also something round, like a hole. All right, so really it's a table of shafts and holes, which is what you can see in the title there. Fits for shafts and holes. Even if it's not a hole, could be a square like a keyway, putting a keyway on a shaft, here's a keyway, here's a shaft, and you've got a keyway sitting here, and you're trying to fit the key into the keyway, All right, here's my key, and I got, I want that to fit in there, but I don't want it so tight that I can't get it in, and I don't want it so loose that it's flapping around either, so I want a pretty good fit between my key and my keyway, in which case I would call the key would be the shaft, and this hole in here would be my hole. Okay, so it does depend on what you're talking about, but most of the time, we just think of a round shaft in a round hole. Now, some, uh, some of the naming systems, let's have a look at uh, why we're using letters and numbers, what's all that mean? First of all, capital letter means hole. Okay, so I'm gonna write that here under my hole column. Holes are capitals. Whenever you see a capital letter, that means hole. And shafts are lowercase. That's the first rule. So wherever you see a capital letter, now we only see H's on capitals, you notice. That's interesting. Whereas with our lowercase, which is our shafts, we've got a bunch of different letters. Right. So we have the... Fortunately, we've got enough letters in our alphabet to uh, do us nicely. We don't need any more. Now, we're not seeing any A's. We're only seeing a range from about an E to about a P. So about that range there. Part of the alphabet. You probably could go all the way back to an A. Whether it's lowercase or uppercase, the, the letters stand for how loose it is. So right down the bottom of the alphabet is super loose, free running. And up the top of the alphabet, it's very tight. Okay, so there's looseness and tightness depending on where you are in the alphabet. So H is sort of considered to be around about the middle. So that's a sort of a standard kind of fit for tight and tightness and looseness. And as you go past H, you start getting interference fits. So you, you're getting very, very tight. You have to be pressed together. And if you go below H, you're getting a loose fit, which can rattle around and slide around. All right, so the letter is the looseness tightness. The numbers, you'll notice we've got numbers that go from. All right, these numbers, the, the nine, that's a, a, a nine or a big number is a rough number and a small number is an accurate number. So that's more difficult to make because it's accurate, has to be very carefully made. So that's hard to do or expensive. And rough is easy. So if I was just doing a bolt in a hole, I might have an A12. I just made that up off the top of my head. Imagine that, if there was such a thing as an A12 fit, which, you, which you, you won't see on this chart because it's too silly, that would be a pathetically rough, like a bolt in a hole. 
and you got a clearance of like half a millimeter around it, which is a lot. Generally speaking, unless you're in construction or something, a bolt only needs about 0.1 millimeters. Construction, of course, uh, they have inaccuracies to worry about, so they might go a whole millimeter bigger, which is a lot. That's a big space. Um, now, if we're getting really, really um, tight and accurate, so we'll have a small number and a high letter, so like a P6, which you can see there on that shaft and that over the right-hand side. This thing is going to be well, well made. The six tells you that it's accurate, and the P says that it's very tight. All right, so that's how the numbering and lettering is working. All right, now let's have a look at the actual chart. Let's dig in and see if we can understand what's going on. Right, now, first of all, all of these numbers that you see down in the table are microns. So there's there's the definition there. One micron is a thousandth of a metre or a, oh, sorry, a thousandth of a millimetre or a millionth of a metre. Micro stands for millionth. So one thousandth of a millimeter. So there's no decimal places in here. They don't bother that it's the first digits after the decimal place because these are in microns. Everything's in microns, right? So that's the first thing. Everything else though is in millimeters. So these ones down the left hand side are millimeters and these are microns. So what we're talking about is how much tolerance are we going to have on our dimension? So let's have a look at this chart up the top. This is like a graphical representation of one of these one down here, and it actually represents the 30 to 50 range. So if your shaft size was between 30 and 50, that's this one here, that row, then we can see the fits to scale in this picture. So here's naught, right? That's the nominal size. So let's get, pick a nominal size somewhere between 30 and 50. For example, let's pick 40. So I just made 40 my nominal size, nominal. That means that this right here represents 40, exactly 40 millimeters to the nearest micron, super accurate. Now you can't make super accurate to the nearest micron. Well, you could, but it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So we like to be able to manufacture as fast as we can. So we just make it allowable to have some deviation that way we don't have to throw out 90% of the parts that were made because they're not perfect. So if it's nearly perfect, that's what we want. So how nearly do we have to be? It's determined by our fits chart. <clears throat> now, if I want a pretty loose fit, I'm going, to, which is a clearance fit, I'm going to be over this side. So let's say I'm doing this fit here, the H9E9. So it's a 40 nominal size with my fit is H9, capital H4, hole, and little e for shaft, and that's also a nine. So they're nines, the numbers are fairly big, so they're fairly easy to make, H9E9. Now find that, this is H9E9 column here, that's that set. Right, and we go down into this row between 30 and 50, which is 40 mil. So it could be 31 up to 49, or even 30, over 30 and up to 50 so it could be from 30.001 up to 50 we use those tolerances as soon as we get to um, actual 50 we have to switch up to these tolerances now what are those uh, actual numbers so they're they're the deviations from the 40 so the 40 can go up 62 in the hole so that's the h so here is 62 microns. So because it's hitting right here. So these are microns, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 microns there. That's 50 microns plus 50. They've written it in millimeters, 0.05, but that's the same as 50 microns. So there's 62. That chart is showing 62 microns above. So I can make my hole any size between exactly 40 and so the hole here at H9 will be the smallest, so it's 40, that's my nominal size, and it'd be plus 0.062 and plus 0. So that's my tolerance for hole. 
Now, what's the tolerance for shaft? It's E9. And if I look at those numbers in here, it's going to be 40, which is my nominal size. And it's minus 112 microns, which is my smallest size, which is 0 0.1, 1, 2, 2. Now, when you're doing tolerances, by the way, if that's in millimetres, this also has to be millimetres. You can't mix microns and millimetres together. That will confuse everybody. And this is naught. That's why I'm converting it to millimetres, 0 0.050. So it's 40 microns minus 50 down to 40 microns minus 112. OK, so that's the way to write it with uh, tolerance as a nominal and plus or minus. In, in our case, we've got pluses on the, our hole, minuses on the shaft. We can rewrite this, though, in limits. So if I was to write this as limits, would look like this. So 40 plus 0 0.062, that means the biggest size is actually 40. 0 0.062. And the smallest size is 40. And that's it, 0 0.000. 0, 0. They're my limits, smallest and biggest. And here the limits would be 40 minus 50 is 39 so it's 50 microns less than 40 so it's 39.950 oh. right that's my biggest size and my smallest size will be 39.8 12 is uh, blah, 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 88 isn't it yeah Eight, eight, eight. There it is. <clears throat> now, when you're entering the answers in your quiz, you're going to be writing them as limits because we can't enter that sort of. We can't enter that. We can't put a plus sign in there. But these are the um, tolerance way to write it, and these are the limits way to write the same thing. Okay, now that's how it works. What I've shown you, though, was a very loose kind of fit, this one. We could do a tight type of fit now. Let's have a look at um, one up the other end. So <clears throat> um, let's have a look at this second last one, H7K6, H7K6. So this one was H9E9. This time we're going to go H7. Capital letter stands for whole, not H. H is just the alphabet part. It's got nothing to do with whole because it wouldn't work in this case because we've got two H's. Which one's a whole? All right, now H7 and H... Oh, that's H7, K6, sorry. I meant to do this, K6. Could do the H, H, but I was going to do this one next. H7, K6. Okay, so that's this box here. This is what's relevant. I'm still going to use the same um, nominal size of 40. If I didn't use 40, if it was outside that range, I'd have to use a different box up or down. But I like to use this chart because I can double check my numbers. That's why I'm staying in the 30 to 50 range. All right, these are my tolerances here. And the one under the capital letter is the hole. So the hole is still the 40. So 40 is my nominal size. That's the um, that's that's the, uh, the horizontal line on the graph here. That's my nominal size. <clears throat> and it says plus 25 microns. So you notice this one is plus 0 0.025. Notice how this is more accurate than it was before. So when we had H9. It was 62 microns of variation, but when we've got H7, it's only got 25 microns of variation, so the variation's gone down. It's getting tighter because the numbers are getting smaller, more accurate. Okay, and we, we can write this also in terms of limits. So we'll have 40.0. Oh. 
So 2.5. And the minimum size being, uh, this is for the hole, 40. Triple zero. All right, so that's H7 on nominal 40. Now, what's K6 on nominal 40? Well, we've still got the same nominal all the way. We're just looking at how much variation we can have on that. All right, now we're going plus. Hey, now we're going plus. Notice there's plus here. Last time it was minus. Before, the shaft was undersized. Now, the shaft is oversized. So it's going oversized by 18 microns. Not point oh one eight, and the minimum shaft size is oversized by not point zero zero two two microns. Eh? you need something accurate to measure that one. All right, so that is K six on a forty. K six on a forty. And writing that as a limits will be 40 point oh 0.018 and this the, the uh, smallest that the shaft is allowed to be is 40 point double oh two Okay, now, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Right. Um, as you get, one of the things you notice here is as you get tighter, you've got to be more accurate. And the reason for that is if you have an interference fit, you can't go and throw in a 60 micron variation on a 40 diameter because the worst case will just won't even go together. It's too ridiculously interference. All right, let's see what's going on here. The Biggest hole and the smallest shaft is the loosest fit. So the biggest hole is 40.025, and the um, smallest shaft is 40.002. So that's actually a clearance. So we would call this a transition fit. Transition fit because it's uh, sometimes it's a clearance, sometimes it's a press. So the biggest gap would be. 25 over minus 2, so it's going 23 microns oversize. So we can have 23 mi microns of clearance. That's the most, the mo that's the uh, most clearance you can get. And the tightest it can get would be the biggest, the smallest um, hole, which is zero, and the tightest here, which would be 18. So we have 18 microns of interference. So we're going from negative 18, as in clashing by 18 microns, up to 23 microns of clearance. Now, if you go all the way to the last one there, the P6H7, it's interference all the way. And by that stage, you're starting to get very, very accurate. Your, your P6 and your H7 um, interfering. They're not going any more accurate than a 6 there because uh, that's starting to get hard to make. All right, now that's how the fits and uh, the fits of for shafts and holes work. The reason, um, uh, one last thing to mention is that the chart that you're looking at here would be called hole basis. This is a hole basis. See here, holes at the top, shafts at the bottom. What you'll notice is all the holes are a H, and a H has one of the tolerances at zero. That is the nominal size. So all the capital H's, that means the holes, the smallest hole in every case, is right on size. We also have another H here, which is a H6 for the shaft. It also has the biggest size is right on size. So H stands for a tolerance, you know, in, in, far, in fact, in, in terms of looseness and tightness, H is kind of sitting in the middle because one of the, um, one of the uh, limits is nominal size. So that's hole basis. You can also have shaft basis. The reason hole basis is more common is because uh, holes are more difficult to make than shafts. 
so it's much easier to match your shaft to the hole than the other way around usually so uh, for example often a, a hole might be reamed you just put a reamer through and that's the size that you get and it's easier to do the reamer at exactly on size plus a little bit um, whereas the shaft you you're free to make whatever size you like pretty much and so you can got more <clears throat> a variability you can have uh, you can move both of the limits fairly easily all right so hole bases tends to be the most commonly used of the fits chart all right so that's to save um, engineers and, and designers uh, trying to come up with their own tolerances to make sure the fits okay someone's already done all the work put it into a table like this and you just say ah oh, i want this sort of fit a fit, pretty tight fit let's just go for a h7g6 i can just put that on my 320 mil and someone has to go and look up the chart and they've got the um, numbers right here so you could actually put the tolerance in as three 320 i could just write you know 320.5 whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how accurate it is it might be 0.52 and then you could say i want that to be a h7 so h is the whole capital is the whole and there'll be a h7 g6 that's it then you don't have to write any tolerances on it they let them work it out 